Hi, once again, welcome you all to Editorial Analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 28th of October 2024. We have taken an article from yesterday's newspaper as well. So, let's look into the list of articles for today's discussion. In the first article, we will be seeing about India's mission to Venus and in the second article, we will be seeing about Delhi's air quality deterioration and in the third article, we will be seeing about patriarchy in Indian society. We will be seeing all this from the mains perspective. So, without any delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Now, look at this news article. This news article talks about Delhi's air quality deterioration. Now, currently it is in news because of the upcoming Diwali season and also the stubble burning that is happening around Delhi. And we are going to see what are all the causes for this deteriorating air quality in Delhi from the mains perspective. For that, I have a mains question for you. What are all the causes behind the worsening air quality in Delhi? Suggest some sustainable practices that can be implemented to manage this problem. So, this question has only two parts. First, you have to write all the causes and in the second part, you have to write all the sustainable practices that can save this air pollution from the Delhi part. So, we will start with the causes. The first cause is stubble burning. See, this contribute to nearly 45 percentage of Delhi's pollution. So, for example, in October 26, 2023, nearly 14.5 percentage of PM 2.5 has increased. See, the issue here is it can get into bloodstream. So, when that happens, the health impacts will be very high. So, it is not only polluting the air quality, but also causing health impacts. Second is the vehicular emission, nearly 40 percentage of Delhi's pollution is coming from vehicles. So, here you can see say that nearly 45 percentage is from the stubble burning and nearly 40 percentage is from vehicular emission. You can even draw a Venn diagram like this and you can show it. So, this vehicular emission actually releases particulate matter, NOx, uh, SO2 and even volatile organic compounds leading to deteriorated air quality. Apart from this, there are also industrial pollution caused by various factories, power plants and construction that is happening around the region and burning the fossil fuels also release toxic pollutants like uh, sulfur oxide and nitrous oxide. Actually, the region around NCR, we can see a lot of uh, demolition of buildings and the construction of new buildings. So, this construction dust has also led to the deterioration of the air quality in Delhi. It has released PM10 and PM2.5 leading to respiratory issues. Apart from this weather pattern and geographical factors, see Delhi is a landlocked region. This means that they lack natural ventilation from all the sites and there is no moderation as well. And mainly during winter, what happens is the cool air that will be remaining in the ground level and the upper sky, it will be warmer than the ground level. So, when the emission or so when the emission happens, it gets trapped in the ground level itself leading to formation of fog and smog. So, these are all certain causes of air quality deterioration in Delhi. Now, we shall see some of the major initiative to manage air pollution in Delhi. See, the first important plan is this Graded Response Action Plan, in short called as GRAP. So, this under this plan, restriction on construction, diesel generator and strict emission norms will be followed. Secondly, odd even vehicle scheme. So, under this scheme, within the time limit, on the first day, odd number vehicles can be operated or on the second day, even vehicles can be operated. So, this will reduce the number of vehicles that are being operated in the region leading to reduced emission and reduced smog and improved air quality. Third is increase in green cover. It is the very cost effective way. Affordable drives and the Green Delhi app for citizen engagement has been brought in and many trees has been planted to improve the air quality in the region. Apart from this, uh, electronic vehicles have been uh, promoted very well and their uh, adoption and charging infrastructure has been initiated in many places. There are also industrial emission standards as well as public awareness campaign that is happening in the region in order to reduce the emission level in the region. So, so far we saw what are all the causes of uh, air pollution or the deterring air quality in Delhi, then we saw some of the major initiatives of government to manage the air pollution. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion.
Now look at this news article. The title itself says New Rocket plus Moon and Venus Mission. So this article is talking about ISRO and its new missions that are going to be launched in the lineup. So we shall see all of them from the mains perspective. Before that, I have a question for you. India's space exploration and technology advancements have witnessed a significant boost with new missions, collaboration and private sector participation. So critically analyze the multidimensional impact of these development on India's economy, security, scientific research and international standing. So here only two parts are there. Firstly, you have to write about India's space exploration and the new missions. Secondly, you have to critically analyze, meaning you have to give both the positives and negatives for each thing, like how it will have an impact on economy, security, scientific research and international standing. So this is how the question is going to be. You can write an answer and you can post it in the comment section so that we can review your answer. So first we shall start with the Gaganyan mission. See, India is going to send Indian astronauts, that is VOIM nets, to low earth orbit by 2025. This mission is only named as the Gaganyan mission. So before sending, there will be a four test mission for safety. And if this happens, India will be in the allied group of human space flight nations among the US, Russia and China. So only three countries has been achieved this uh, human space flight to the outer space. So among these countries, India will also be joining this allied club if this Gaganyan mission happens without any delay. So even though this is very significant, we also have a uh, added advantage of indigenous crew escape system development and we have indigenous life support training infrastructure that will be attached to the Gaganyan mission. And for this also, this mission is a very important and significant mission. So for this, we have international collaboration. We are getting training from Russia and potential future partnership will be getting from the private investors. So this is a very important mission that you have to remember the Gaganyan mission. So in this Gaganyan mission, a particular thing that you have to notice, we have creating this next generation launch vehicle in short called as MGLV. So it is nothing but a launch vehicle apart from this PSLV, firstly the SSLV, PSLV, then the GSLV. Now we are going to NGLV. Say this is a reusable launch vehicle. So once the launch is done, we can reuse it for another launch and we can get the parts of it by re-entry into earth atmosphere from the space. So it is a cost effective and reusable launch vehicle. So the first important impact is its economic impact. Most of the cost will be cut down if this happens. So already we are doing good when it comes to the space exploration. And when we develop this and portray it to the world, we'll be the competitive player in global launch market. And we can attract a lot of private investment and clients. Apart from this, it is a environmentally sustainable technology, especially we'll be using green fuel mixture. This will reduce the carbon footprint as well. And finally, it is going to invest a lot of uh, money and boost make in India. So the domestic production and technology and technological self-reliance will be achieved in India. So this is also a very important note that you have to make. Apart from this, we have a new mission called Lupex mission with Japan. So this Lupex mission is an international collaboration mission. This is the second mission apart from the Gaganyan. So this Lupex can be expanded as Lunar Polar Exploration Mission. So the main purpose of this mission is to study lunar water resources. And the main objective of this particular mission is to understand the water availability for future lunar colonies. So if this mission gets successful, India will be getting a geopolitical strategic importance because it will strengthen India's position in Asia Pacific space ecosystem. And since we collaborated with Japan, we are going to share the expertise for complex mission as well. So this is the second important mission that you have to make note of. Now the third important mission is this Venus mission that is going to happen in 2026. See this mission aims to study Venus atmosphere, surface and climatic patterns. Now we are going to study this because 
it will help us to understand earth's climate change and what will be the impact of climate change on earth because venus also had similar atmosphere condition similar to earth we can say venus as a twin of earth so when we understand the climatic pattern of venus we can predict what will be the impact of uh, climate change that is going to happen in earth apart from this it will give us the knowledge of planetary formation and habitable planets if this mission gets successful we will be expanding india's footprint in interplanetary exploration as well so this is the third important mission that you have to make note of so all these can be made a uh, very big successful if we get the private partnership so let us see what will be private sector role in space see the first thing is they can bring a lot of investment that we already know and it can already bring innovation so when they bring in investment they have to cut down the cost so in order to cut down the cost they bring in a lot of uh, innovative ideas to the table and that will be actually helping our government and it also lead to the development of the ventures as well for example the sky route and pixel and etc secondly the skill development it will boost technical and marginal skill that will align with arma nirma bharat thirdly it will boost economy by contributing to india's 5 trillion economic goal by fostering high tech industries and finally the foreign exchange savings will be growing it will reduce dependency on foreign technology and it will also increase the rupee exchange value so these are all the facts that you have to remember when it comes to the role of private in space technology so so far we saw about three different important missions of indian government especially isro's three important missions then we saw about what will be the private sector role in space so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ai's academy youtube channel now thank you so much for listening